Hello and welcome to this revision video. In particular, I'm saying hello and welcome to Year 9 students, although this video isn't just for Year 9 students. Obviously, any student in any year group can use this video to help them with their revision. This is part of a series of revision videos which I've prepared for you, and we started in Year 7 with look, cover, write, check as the method, as the strategy for revision, as a way to help you with self-quizzing. Then in year eight we spent some time on flashcards and now in year nine in particular we are going to focus on making and using knowledge organisers so that you can be the best that you can be when it comes to your performance in your summative assessments. But of course as I've already said, any other students in any other year group can use this video to help them strategize their revision. And so on that basis, I know I may be talking to year 10s and year 11s as well, which is absolutely fine. This gives you another way of revising so that you can obviously be the best that you can be, not in summative assessments, but in your mock exams in year 10 or formal final exams if you are in year 11. So... The first thing that I want to start off by saying is that you need to be careful which knowledge organisers that you use. So, make sure that you use knowledge organisers which have been given to you by your teachers in your subjects here at Crown Hills. And also make sure that because in year nine, some of your summative assessments are going to be sampling from what we call a wider domain. So that includes things that you've learned in year seven and in year eight. You really do need to make sure that you are speaking to your teachers as well when it comes to knowledge organisers about which ones are the most appropriate ones to be using and learning from. So that's the first thing. Make sure that you have the right knowledge organisers for when you are actually revising. If you do come across any knowledge organisers on the internet, for example, we don't recommend that you use them. Certainly, you mustn't use them until you check with your teacher that it covers everything that it needs to cover for you and your summative assessments or maybe other exams too. So you must get those checked if you are using anything else other than the knowledge organisers which we are giving to you here at Crown Hills. I'm going to talk to you now about how you make your own knowledge organiser. That's just in case you don't have a knowledge organiser for the topic that you have to study. I'm aware that most subjects, most of the time, for most of the topics taught, have some sort of a knowledge organiser. So obviously use what's there if you've already been given one. But sometimes students like to make their own as part of their revision. So I want to start off by talking you through the process of how to actually make your own knowledge organiser, if that's something that you want to do. And then later on in this presentation, I'll then talk to you about how you actually use a knowledge organiser, whether you've made that yourself or whether you are using one which we have given to you here at Crown Hills. So, the first health warning I want to give to you is, obviously, we don't recommend that you make your own knowledge organisers, but if you are really determined to do so, then this is the process that you go through. You need to read through the information in your exercise books or from a textbook, a revision guide perhaps, certainly no more than a page at a time. After which, one at a time, you need to pull out the most important information. But I appreciate it's actually quite difficult to know when you're revising what always is the most important information. How do you actually know what is the most important information to pull out of your revision guides, textbooks, exercise books in order to put them onto a knowledge organiser? Well, look out for things that you've highlighted or been told to underline or work on by your teachers. Look for facts which you then need to group together. In terms of processes, do you know how to answer a specific exam type question in a certain way? Check with your teacher first to make sure that you've learned it exactly as you need to learn it before you commit it to paper 
in a knowledge organiser of your own making. Then, what do you do? You, with that information that you've decided is the most important, you copy it out carefully and correctly. You don't want to introduce any mistakes from any other sources onto your uh, knowledge organiser. And you do that onto a side of plain A4. And if you need to, use short bullet points to really make sure that you're concentrating the information down to the absolute minimum, but also the most important information that you then need to revise from later. Of course, you should feel free to use colours, images, patterns, shapes to add meaning to what you've copied down to. That will help you to memorise the information, but you must make sure that you don't overfill your knowledge organiser. And if you're struggling to start, I can say that there are plenty of blank templates available online for you to download just by searching for a blank template for knowledge organiser and you'll see um, lots of um, examples for you there to use. Again thinking about what is the most important information that you need to include on a knowledge organiser, think about knowledge organisers that you might have seen given out by your teachers for other topics in other subjects. So. As teachers, we make sure that on the knowledge organiser there's key vocabulary, key places and people, useful diagrams, which are required for the topic, key dates for, for example, a subject like history and key themes, as well as important quotations that demonstrate those themes. You might even include stem sentences for a subject like mathematics to help you remember and revise certain rules, etc., etc. At this stage, you should have a knowledge organiser then, which either you have made yourself based on the instructions which I just went through, or you have a knowledge organiser given to you by your teachers here at Crown Hills, which obviously closely follows the curriculum that you've been studying. Once you've got your knowledge organisers, once you've checked that they are right with your teachers, you can now start to use them to revise from. So the first thing that you need to do is to read and revise small chunks of a knowledge organiser only. Remember a knowledge organiser should bring together all of the information, all of the key information about a topic into one place. But it's too much to learn all of that information in one go. So what you should do, and here's an example of a knowledge organiser that I've been using, what you should be doing is making sure that you're just learning one chunk at a time. So for me, in this knowledge organiser, I would just be learning this small chunk first. I would not be attempting to learn all of this all in one go. Small chunks at a time in time limits of, I would say, no more than 20 minutes without taking a little break in between. You should then revise those chunks one at a time, one after the other in 20 minute sessions with breaks in between. You should then do that regularly and often until that information is really starting to sink in. And of course what you could do to help you learn the contents of those chunks on the Knowledge Organiser is go back to other strategies which we've used in other videos. So look, cover, right, check, for example, would be a really good way of helping you to learn the contents of a Knowledge Organiser or making some flashcards based on the information on a Knowledge Organiser. So you can now start now that you're getting older, mixing and matching some of these strategies too. And the key thing here is what we call spaced retrieval. So that means learning something once, but not expecting it all to sink in, not expecting it all to have been learned in that moment. What you need to do is to create some spaces in between the times when you read and revise this again. So for example, you could read a section, test yourself on it, and then a day later, check what's uh, been absorbed. Remember this important fact. If you haven't remembered it, you've not learned it. So then see how far you can go. At the seven day point, seven days after you first looked at it, how much do you remember? If you can't remember everything, go back. 
make sure once again you're going through it so that you are remembering it in order to learn it and then space it out again maybe go to the 21 day mark from the time when you first looked at that section and again test what you are remembering through space retrieval if you go through some cycles of repeated revision and work you should really be remembering more ready for your summative assessments or if you're studying for these your formal exams too in terms of how you revise from a knowledge organiser, building on the idea of space retrieval is the idea that you should also be revising facts from your knowledge organiser cumulatively, which means building up over time. So, for example, I could start by learning this section, section two, and then I would move on to section three. But when I test myself on section three, I'd also go back and see what can I remember from section two as well. That's what we call cumulative revision. Sampling previously learned facts from old sections with newly learned facts from new sections. Another way that you can use knowledge organisers uh, from which to revise includes using the information in front of you to answer questions which have been set for you by your teachers. So using it actually as a guide to help you with exam style questions. Also, once you've learned the contents of a knowledge organiser well, I think the best thing for you to try to do is to also work beyond it. What I mean by that is, can you create it, recreate it on a blank piece of A4 paper? Can you talk it through? Can you make and narrate connections between its sections, moving between one section and another. Can you talk those things through? As I've already mentioned, please don't forget to combine your learning of a knowledge organiser and its contents with other strategies as well that we've previously learned, such as the look, cover, write, check or correct method, as well as using flashcards. Another quick tip as well is make this knowledge organiser your own. Make it work for you. So you can see here for this section, I was finding it really hard to remember the contents of this particular section. So to help me remember it, I simply took the first letter or letters of each of the separate words and made that into a mnemonic to help me remember it better. So I came up with medics, two M's and then edics, medics. So that helps me to remember the contents of this much better because I was finding it hard to remember the first thing and then the second thing because they didn't appear to me to be connected or linked. I made the connections, I made the links. Finally, another way to use a knowledge organiser is to involve other people. Get them to test you and get them uh, to test each other and learn from each other by quizzing each other constantly. Having spent some time learning how to learn, learning how to revise using this particular strategy, all that's left for me now to say to you, each and every one of you, is regardless of what you are revising for, it could be a summative assessment, a mock exam, or your real life GCSEs, all I want to say to you on behalf of all of the senior leadership team and the school is best of luck to you. We know that through doing what it takes for as long as it takes, showing commitment to your revision, you will absolutely enjoy and experience success both now and in the future. Bye and good luck.